In the global study of the factors that impact on learning, good mental health ranked especially high. The way we see well-being at Cambria College is not an airy-fairy, molly-coddling exercise. It's about developing programs and approaches that build self-awareness, that build resilience. Kids as young as seven are being clinically diagnosed with depression and anxiety. It's early in term three. Cambria is working with psychologist Lee Waters from Melbourne's Graduate School of Education. What we also know is that if a young person experiences mental illness during adolescence, they're three times more likely to re-experience mental illness in their adult life. When I had the opportunity to hear Professor Waters speak about her visible well-being and her positive psychology, it really resonated with, with me and other members of my team. The last thing I'm going to do today is say that you as a teacher should be a therapist. The other thing I'm not going to do today is tell you that you should cheer up. <laughs> One of the hopes I have for Lee working with us is that we'll actually stop some of the kids who end up in the care of Andy and the wellbeing team. They will have the tools to have actually sort of pulled themselves out of that scenario and they're then able to engage in school a little bit more effectively. They're feeling better as a person and then they become better as a learner. And so I want to encourage you to think as a school, how can we use the character strengths model as the first phase in this visible wellbeing project? Woodwork teacher Brad O'Day has an inspired idea to remind teachers about the wellbeing program. It's all about character strengths, you know, hope, humour, playfulness, integrity, things like that and we're going to be making a tree with all those words and character traits on different branches and then everyone gets to tie a ribbon onto the branch that they associate with. It's taking pride of place in the staff room. Something as visible as this is really putting the, um, the terminology and the vocabulary at the forefront of everyone's mind. It's, it's just having a bit of fun and, and um, it's actually it's sparking a lot of conversation between staff as well. Oh, are you forgiving, Pete? No, Lee. Very good, very good. Thanks, I'm buddy. hanging this delightful little caterpillar of me on bravery, so that'll be my number one, and uh, then I'll move around and hang my others as well. I oh, shattered humour wasn't in there. I thought humour was going to be there. I'm going to say, mate, you're not a very funny bloke. Yeah, obviously. There we go. It's got pretty. The task now is to try and improve well-being in the classroom. You are going to be completing a survey which helps you to identify the character strengths that you have. It's important because they need to understand who they are, you know, to help them appreciate yeah, what they're good at, you know. Especially at this particular age, you get someone like Shara. Shara is really proud of the fact that she, you know, has these values. One's appreciation of beauty and excellence. The second one's humour. Um, the third one's kindness. Fourth is bravery and fifth is fairness. That makes sense. There's often um, low self-esteem and all of these sort of qualities are really important for them to actually be able to identify what they're good at. One thing I noticed last time they went into exams, it was quite a stressful scenario for them. They saw it as a very negative, impactful experience. Even though they're academically very capable, psychologically it was very difficult for them. Miss Hewitt and psychologist so Lee Waters are applying the wellbeing program to exam nerves. Of the six. How about we craft um, the idea of a, a kind of formula mm. of success mm -hmm. for like exam that. performance. I like that. Yeah. And so we're, we're, we're saying, you know, exam performance equals content knowledge plus taking care of your wellbeing. Yes. Yeah, they'll like that. Miss Hewitt's science class are the guinea pigs. All right, get comfy, year eight. So today, we're going to develop ourselves a psychological toolkit. Why would this idea of positive wellbeing be relevant to you as year eight's about to go into exams right this minute? Probably because if I do well, if I'm more positive, then I'll probably be less stressed and my brain will do better in the exam. I think the work we've been doing with the Visible Wellbeing Trial has sort of brought forward to them some ideas about wellbeing that they hadn't really considered before. So now they're much more self-aware about their stress and 
why am I feeling stressed and how do I know I'm feeling stressed? This notion of well-being, or as I'd call it, respect for self and respect for others, that, those are taught skills. I think we should have a responsibility for teaching those, those kind of skills in our schooling system. I imagine my brain like, like a little bucket, right? Mm. And if there's stress, like heaps of stress, and then you have only a little room for like studying. So if you like tip out all the stress and then you have more room for oh, studying. Oh, I love that. So if we want to look at our optimum academic performance, then we need to work on our knowledge and skills and our well-being. They go together, hand in hand. For coping with stress, I did swimming and reading because that helps me cope with stress. Alrighty, I'll see you on Friday. After piloting the well-being program, students have been surveyed to measure its impact. Um, the third one's kindness, fourth is bravery, and fifth is fairness. Psychologist Lee Waters now has the results. I got the analysis back yesterday and honestly I was jumping around oh. my lounge room like whoo, whoo. Awesome. so excited to share mm. these with you. So it's good. <laughs> well we've developed a tool to test whether the visible wellbeing approach is working. It's an online survey that we administer in the class and what we're looking to see is whether there's been any shifts in those wellbeing indicators before the students went through a visible wellbeing approach and after. I've learned something new about my well-being as a result of the visible well-being ideas. 82%. Awesome. Wow. That's like that that's yeah. that just blew yeah. me away. Yeah. I now feel more confident in taking care of my well-being as a result of the visible well-being approach. 81%. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's really impressive. It is. Taking care of my well-being helps me learn better yeah. in class. Awesome. 83%. That's, that's phenomenal. Isn't that great? Yeah. Because this is this is the crux, I think, if we can The get program it. that we've rolled out is making a difference. By not only giving them a sense of happiness and satisfaction and resilience, we're also giving them the chance to learn. And I, that, that's just, there's no lose in that. It's just win-win. Pretty cool, Put hey? it, put it frame and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we yeah. did that to ourselves. <laughs>